everyone. Just wanted to pop in here and do another God Guide. Um, first of all, just make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, all the cool YouTube stuff. If you want to see more of stuff like this. Um, but this time, for on this episode of A Plebs Guide, we're going to go over one of my favorite gods and everyone's favorite dragon, Kukul Khan. So, this is a plebs guide to Kukul Khan. And yes, it's Kukul Khan, not Kukulk in. I hate that. I really, literally do that. He literally says his name from the very start when you pick him. But anyway, uh, <laughs> let's move on. So, a fun story here. Um, I just want to go over uh, Kukul Khan, actually, the first guy I diamond. And he's actually someone that I highly recommend for new players. He's easy to learn. Uh, he does take some time to master. He has a great skill set and a very diverse one to get the hang of how to play the game. Um, he did teach me the basics of the game and like I said I highly recommend him to new players. Uh, story time. When I first started playing Smite, I was so focused on minion clear that I would actually alt minions so they didn't hit tower line. Um, it's something that I still get made fun of to this day, so don't do that. Alright, so first let's go over his abilities. Uh, the first one is his passive, and I think it's amazing. It's called Power of the Wind Jewel, and basically it converts 5% of your total mana into power. When we go over the builds later on, you'll see why I love it. Next, his one is called Zephyr. Basically, you shoot a projectile out that slows whoever it hits. Um, and it has actually a very small AoE, which people actually, a lot of times, uh, especially if you haven't played them before, people don't actually realize there's a little bit of an AoE, so anyone who gets hit directly in a small amount of our, around will actually get slowed. This is perfect for chasing. It's also perfect for self-peeling. So if you're getting caught, go ahead, hit someone. And you can then uh, run away with your two. So like I said, going along with that, his second ability is called Slipstream. It's a speed boost ability. It actually cleanses any slows. It's, it's great. So if someone hits you with something, say like a Baron hits you with a snake, you can use that, cleanse yourself of it. Again, um, this is a great tool for either chasing or retreating. You're going to want this up as often as possible because Kukul Khan has, is one of the slower gods by default, you know, at least with, at least it seems with uh, his base speed. His third ability is called Whirlwind, and it's the main reason to play him, in my opinion. This is some of the best wave clear in the game. I I wouldn't say it's 100% the best, but it definitely it, it's up there. Maybe Raz might be better in my, uh, if you're just clearing minions. Um, it's a... Sorry, it's an... Can I use proper grammar? It's an AoE damage over time ability that does damage every 0.5 seconds for 2.5 total seconds. So that's cool in of itself, but if an enemy walks back into it, it actually refreshes the damage. So after the whirlwind dissipates, if someone had walked back into it, there's an additional 2.5 seconds they're taking more damage. Um, pair this with a few items and it can actually just change an entire team fight. Also, if you're on a max cooldown build with, like, say, Chronos Pennant and stuff, you can have this down almost constantly. It lasts, I think, about four seconds, and it can be on a four-second time <laughs> reset. So, like, as soon as it dissipates, you have another one down, and it gets really gross when you do that. Uh, finally, let's go down to his alt. Uh, his alt is called Spirit of the Nine Winds. And this move is the definition of straightforward. It is a long line attack that does a lot of damage. It knocks enemies out. The only 
real downside is that it is very telegraphed. It works the best with an ally that has a stun or a pull, something like an Ares or a Cerberus, so they can get everybody in one spot, and as soon as they land, they're hit with it. Alright, so let's actually move on to the build. So, I just want to say that this is a casual, non-conquest build. And, like always, in a plebs guide, I'm a pleb, so there you go. So first, in my opinion, you, you should always build Book of Thoth. It works just too well with your passive not to. When, book, when you get Book of Thoth and you get it fully stacked, you're getting a ton of mana. So not only is it that 5% of your mana as power for your passive, but Book of Thoth does the exact same thing. So now that's a total of 10% of your mana as extra power. Uh, and next, you're going to go into Blue Boots. Uh, so the Blue Boots, they actually uh, add to your mana pool, which adds to your power two times, plus it has cooldown. And normally in my build, this is the only time that I have cooldown. Third item should always be Gem of Isolation. This works so well with your Whirlwind, applying a slow with each tick of damage. I feel this should be your core three items, and they should be built every game. But your next three items they can be changed up a little bit, depending on the flow of the game. Item 4 should be the Spear of the Magus. Um, so, Blue Spear, as it used to be called. And here's why you build this. It has 65 power, with a passive that gives you 10 pen per damaging ability. And it stacks up to 5 times. That includes tick damage. So, this with your Whirlwind, you just shred anybody's uh, defense. Uh, I think it has 15 base penetration already to begin with. So, you have tanks, you have squishies, you have anybody. This is going to shred all the protections. And I feel like with this you actually don't need any other pen. Next I go into either a Soul Reaver for power or if I'm getting beat up on I go into a Book of the Dead for survivability. Both of them give you a lot of power and uh, mana, which gives you lots more power. Uh, the Soul Reaver just does a lot of extra damage and will shred through other, not protections, but like health, so kind of like a Kinsai. And Book of the Dead gives you a health shield. Um, last, I, I'll go for either like a Chronos Pen if I feel like I, I need more cooldown, or the Ethereal Staff. Now, the Ethereal Staff is... I don't know if people actually understand it, but it's its great. I like it a lot on him. Not only does it give him health, gives you power, gives you crowd control reduction, but it also steals health and mana. It, so not only does it add extra power to you temporarily while you steal it, the enemy doesn't have that health that you stole or that mana that you stole from their total health pool. So it's 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 great on him, especially if you're going with like a Book of the Dead. If you're going a full out mana build. Um if you're going anything with defense, I mean obviously you're gonna be going something like um if you're getting picked on by like a Loki, I'd say go with Anything that gives you the mana as well. So, Breastplate of Valor is great because it gives you mana and it gives you um, that physical defense. Loki won't be able to one shot you with his ult. And plus, it gives you more power. So, anytime that you need something defensive for him, it's great because now you have two ways to uh, give you that extra 10% power. So anything with mana on defense will give you power, so you're not sacrificing as much. Um, I also like Shaman's Ring for moving on him. It's it's a weird one. Um, I actually, a buddy of mine was trying to play around with a no boots build where he only would build different, uh, a couple like Shaman's Ring and a couple of other movement speed items, um, and it worked for the most part, but. I think that going Boots and Shaman's Ring is enough movement speed to get you out of almost any harm's way. I also like 
Soul Gem, it gives you a cooldown, it gives you life steal, it gives you health, it gives you a little more survivability in that aspect. Um, plus, it, it can also heal any teammates if need be. So. Anyway, that uh, just about does it for this plebs guide. So, once again, to reiterate, I am a not a like a pro player by any stretch of the imagination. So I'd consider myself kind of plebby, but this is kind of like a beginner's guide. Uh, you know, something that if you don't know the game of Smite or if you are just looking for a guide to start with, that's what I, how I like to look at it. Anyway, if you did like this, go ahead and give it a like. Comment what you think. If you have any better builds, if you have any other uh, things you want to add to it. Otherwise, uh, if you want me to make another guide for a guide you like, I will try. Again, not really the best, but I could definitely try for you. Um, let me know whatever you want. Anyway, uh, you guys have a great rest of your day.